hot minute since I have come on here and had a chat to you guys. Um, I'm not going to actually be doing a proper uh, podcast, vlogcast on um, everything I'm working on or anything like that today. I'm actually going to be going through, you can't quite see it, but there's a really big pile here, um, my handmade wardrobe. So I'm going to talk you through um, what things I've made recently and what things I've I, I wear. Um, as a general rule I wear everything I make so um, I'll tell you what the patterns are and things like that. Um, but I won't talk you any uh, through any of my whips or anything so I will do that in a, another episode. So I will um, yeah, get stuck in. So my name's Hannah and I, <laughs> sorry that was my cat, um, and I live in the Cotswold in the U, Cotswolds in the UK, blah, and um, right in, out in the countryside and um, I crochet and knit so you will see some crochet garments and some knitted garments as well um, and you can find me on Instagram as Tosca's Gubbins or The Pask Gubbins and um, The Pask Gubbins is my sort of personal um, Instagram and you'll see more like makeup and life sort of photos there um, and Tosca's Gubbins is my sort of business Instagram so you'll see my crochet, my knitting, um, occasional life stuff but usually stuff like that and then products that I sell at my Etsy store which is also, also Tosca's Gubbins um, so I'll put all that on the screen somewhere um, and I do have a Facebook page for Tosca's Gubbins as well I'm not so active over there I'm not the biggest Facebook user anymore so um, yeah but if you want to go and give me a follow there that'd be great um, and if you'd like to like subscribe and um, comment that would be lovely um, nice comments would be preferred um, I will splice in some footage of me actually wearing the garments so um, while I'm talking about each of them so I'll start at the top because that's the smallest one um, so this one is the first one I'm really sorry if my camera is slightly out of focus because I don't have an, an auto focus camera so I'm, I'm sorry <laughs> I'm sorry um so this oh my gosh can I can I hold it up so it looks like a normal thing um this is my rip, uh, DK ripple bralette by Jessie May designs um and I will pop on the screen all of the information for what the patterns are and what the designers are and if I know what I used, what yarn I used as well. So um, I've done it as a cross back, you can do cross at the back or um, straight slap, uh, straight straps, words today, I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, it's because it's all out of ribbing it's uber uber stretchy um, and you'll see <laughs> in the clip that um, I don't have an, an insubstantial chest so um, I wanted to try making some of my own bralettes to accommodate my my boobs a little bit better um, for like comfy lounging bras and things like that because I just can't be lying around um, with an underwire bra on it's just not it's not no, it's not okay. <laughs> um, so, secondly, um, I have actually another Jessie May um, design. This one is the, um, I want to say, my secret crop. My secret summer crop, I think. Um, so, it's in a really snazzy yarn. And... Um, this yarn is from a dyer who no longer dyes um, so I managed to snag a few different 
a few different skeins before she completely stopped trading. Um, so yeah, that's it fingering weight this one, so it's much lighter in area, whereas the other one, it is a pattern for DK, but I didn't get gauge with DK, I had to go up to an Aran. Um, but yeah, this is lovely. This um, is uh, is a free pattern. Was a free pattern when I picked it up. I did mod the sleeves, uh, the sleeves, the straps. I modded the straps um, because I wanted a sort of wider, flatter strap in order to cover my bra straps because I have to wear quite hefty bras. So um, I wanted something, and that's why if you see on Instagram, if you have a look at it, um, a lot of people's crops go really far in before the straps begin, but because I wanted it to cover my bra straps, I only went in so far. Um, so yes, that is that one. Right. And then this one. So this is a newly completed uh, test. Uh, crochet so those two were both knitting um, and then this is a crochet piece it's like uh, I think it's called the lace motif vest lace motif vest um, so it's all these motifs sewn together and it's got a little pair of um, stringy spaghetti straps and then at the back it ties up with a little set of these cute spaghetti straps as well. Um, so yes, that's what it looks like. I chose to use up some, um, I had some sort of scrap yarn that I used up for the, for the three, this one, this one and this one, and then I had some 50 gram um, skeins in the green and the peach so I thought that all of those colours kind of went together really nicely. Um, it's a really nice sort of light summery top and the way the straps you'll see when I'm wearing it, the way the straps go they sit really far out and they loop just under your arm um, so it's really good if you don't have to wear a bra. I however have no option but my plan is to wear this um, over the top of kind of like bikinis and stuff like that. Wow, because it's so it's so airy because it's got all of the the sort of lace detail on each motif. Um, it would be the perfect sort of cover up um, situation on the top, and you'd get minimal um, like excessive tan lines I think by wearing it so yeah that is the lace motif top and that is by homemade by Marcy and that was a test crochet that I've just completed um, so it'll be coming out soon it's not it's not out yet the next one is oh I hope you can see this is this little um, sort of lace pattern crop so if I put my hand can you just about see the, the pattern? So yes, this is um, or was a test piece that I did for uh, Rebecca, a Rebecca um, Haas crochet, I think that's how you say it. Um, so I whipped this up super fast, it's such a quick make it's it's amazing how fast it was um i did mod the pattern um so it's it's a cropped um top uh, however i did an extra repeat um in the top part after you uh, split off for the um armholes uh to once again accommodate my bust which is why we make our own clothes isn't it so that it fits you right um, or at least that's one of my main reasons anyway. So um, yeah, I made it in this beautiful like foresty green colour and um, I'll have to pop on the screen exactly what yarn that was because I can't think off the top of my head. 
Um, but yeah, it has this beautiful sort of shell pattern and um, my preferred way to wear this is over the top of blouses. So um, it's, it's like a really cute overlay. Um, and I'm not like exposing massive amounts of my um, my belly or anything. I think that's a super cute way to wear a, to dress it up for like workwear as well, um, because of it being a little bit lacy. So that's that one. Did I even tell you what that was called? No, I didn't. It's the San Foie top, I believe. I believe. Um, Okay, and then next I have this gorgeous number. I've got, I'm having a bit of a cropped moment, aren't I? Um, so yes, I am having a bit of a cropped moment. This was another test crochet. A lot of these test crochets, actually. Um, another test crochet. This one was for... Um, Sandra? Is it Sandra? Yes. This one is Sandra at Nomad Stitches pattern and this is the Malacon top. I'm probably saying it wrong but we, we try, we try. Um, and it is just amazing. I've had so many comments on this top. It was such fun to do. I've, I've never done mosaic crochet before. So this was um, every time, <coughs> story time, every time I take on a new test crochet, I try to only apply for ones that I think are going to improve my techniques or help me learn something new about um, crochet. Um, I've never done a knitting test. So um, that's something I'm working my way up to because I, I don't think I'm quite accomplished enough to, to do that yet, but I'm getting there. Um, but yeah, so this one, oh, I just had to. It's so, so gorgeous. Um, so I've got um, another one of those, I'm sorry, discontinued yarns as the, um, like the interlocking pieces of the mosaic crochet and then um this beautiful yarn on the this beautiful hand dyed yarn on the sleeves and the bobbles um oh dear the cats have just come in and they're both really fluffed up and they're having a little having a little scrub but yeah, this is just so, so stunning. I can't recommend this more. I can't recommend Sandra's patterns more because they are just so beautiful. And if you want to try Mosaic Crochet, um, they're really comprehensive patterns. There's a lot of uh, guidance and help. So um, I will definitely be making a lot more of her pattern. It's a granny, just a granny. And um, it's basically two big grannies together, so one one panel for each side, um, and then seamed up the sides, and then I, I measured the armhole, and then just went round and round a few times, so I had a little sleeve, um, and then I went round the arm edges, the, the sleeve edges, and the bottom, oh, that didn't sound good, um, in a, a shell stitch. So it was just a made up jobby because I had loads of this yarn and I just thought, oh, I'll just, just do something, you know, whatever, just make it up. Like, I think I can do that. <laughs> um, but I quite like it. I think it's I think it's quite cute, and um, as you'll see in the video, I have a bit of a habit of tucking everything slightly just into the front of my trousers. So I think once I do that, it's uh... sorry, I'm just distracted by that's awful. Um, once I do that, that's um, 
helps give it a bit more shape and stuff like that. Um, right, this one is another knitting project. And um, this one is uh, not blocked yet, so please excuse its wibbly wobbliness. But this, another cropped one, another cropped affair. Um, this is the Lady Fingers sweater by More Thunder on Instagram, uh, Morgan at More Thunder. And um, she put it up for a knit along on her blog. And um, I went out and bought, um, oh my gosh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven colours, uh, seven rainbow colours, and um, uh, 50 gram balls, and um, decided I wanted to make a cropped little um, sweater t-shirt, and it is so beautiful. This is Cascades yarn. Um, up exactly what it is and which colours I used um, but it's just so beautiful it's so squidgy and soft I can't wait to block it and then wear it like always it did take me five million years to weave in all the ends though um, but it's super cute and then at the end of each so at the start I um, so at the beginning I used red for the first section so I used red on the um, the neckband and then I finished the red and the next colour would have been orange so I used orange for the cuffs on the sleeves and the same at the bottom I finished the blue and the next colour would have been the purple so I did the ribbing the purple so it's all... Um, I think it all matches up nicely, so when you wear the sleeves it's right next to the that bit. Um, and I'll put the sizes and everything on the screen as well. Which I will have been doing already, of course, because this is nearly the end of the video. And then I just have two sweaters that I've got. Um, I do have several projects on the go, but as I said, that will be another video. So, this, another test crochet. This gloriousness, please excuse its big crumple in the middle. There we go. Um, so yeah, it's got the wonderful mustard sleeves, the teal body, and the sort of wine coloured top section. Right, so this is the Spoonbill sweater by um, made by Hayley Bailey on Instagram. Um, and Hayley is a fantastic, fantastic crochet designer, so you should definitely go check her out as well. I highly recommend all of the people that I'm talking about here um, because they are all amazing knitwear and um, crochet wear designers and they've all of the patterns have been so good and easy to follow um, you know even the test patterns where you're like expected to find something wrong um, it's it's just that they're, they're just so wonderful and they're all so approachable and lovely and fantastic if you have any problems so um yeah highly recommend but the yeah the, so the spoonbill sweater it is so squidgy and comfy and cozy last but not least this look is gonna look huge when i hold it up but it's a very big like oversized chunky boxy sweater and this is made of a hundred percent cotton so you can imagine the weight of it um but I really wanted something that was a bit, like a bit of a cooler fibre to wear. Um, and I really love it. I love it so much. And it's got, um, it. W this pattern was from an issue of Inside Crochet. It was Inside Crochet or Simply Crochet, but I will put it on the screen. And what issue it is. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's just called The Bobble Jumper. So it's got little bobbles on its cuffs 
and bobbles along the band at the bottom and it's lovely it's had a bit of a uh, rough wear this but um i really like I, I mean it wasn't striped it was just all one color and it had a motif on it i did a lot of mods on this <laughs> had a, um, a star motif on the front in bobbles um which i forwent and it's also much longer and more um like way more oversized in the pattern um so i basically cropped it a bit um i mean i could have gone a bit shorter on the sleeves they, they ended up a little long um and then color blocked it which i think looks really cool with the purple and the gray so um yeah i i, I really like this one it's really comfy and it does have the the additional sort of cooling qualities of being made out of cotton even if it is quite heavy but sometimes I quite like that I like I quite like the weight of um of a sweater but yeah like com compared to the other sweater it's it's like oh god like at least double the weight <laughs> right so that is everything or all of my garments anyway that um, have been crocheted and knitted many of them this year um, and now that we've kind of gone through all that you know all of the fun bits and if you're still watching I'll um, I'll talk to you a little bit about how I've not been here I, I did my little um, show up at the beginning of the year I think it was January that I did my um, January or December that I did my last podcast um, and 2020 has literally kicked my ass <laughs> oh my god it, I, I mean I know it's kicked everyone's ass but it started kicking my ass before it even corona <laughs> I mean at the, the end of January I woke up and um my knee my right knee was was at least double the size it was just like completely swollen um and so i was like in and out of a and e and i had my knee aspirated twice and they were like testing it for infections and this that and the other and so I was, i've been in and out of doctors and hospital and um it anyway it turns out i've got this um, type of arthritis which occurs in knees and wrists most commonly and it flares up and there's like no nothing you can do about it basically but um, it's still like an ongoing issue and usually so I definitely have that because there's specific tests that they do um, but it seems like there's another issue whether or not there's a knee injury there that um, has been upset by all of the swelling because usually bouts of that are gone within three to five weeks and um i'm five and a half months in and um my knee's gone down a lot but i still can't straighten it and i still have some localized swelling and i still can't kneel or um or use it fully so <laughs> i've got to wait and until um hospital appointments uh a back up and running basically because it's all been um rejigged because of everything else that's wrong in the world <laughs> so uh yeah i've just been like homebound i was off work for ages because i couldn't drive and um and i, I couldn't even sit at a desk i was in so much pain i was on so many painkillers and anti-inflammatories <laughs> oh it's just been a really bad year so um it's taken me until now to feel like I can come on and, and talk to everyone again and yeah as if I just felt like my mental health was getting back to um back to an okay place and then all of this happened and it it just like took me way back down again so um and then just not being able to go anywhere and it's just making me feel a little bit like a hermit like I kind of don't want to go anywhere or see anyone but at the same time it's probably good for me 
because <laughs> it's making it's it's just making it worse. Um, so yeah, a little bit of an overshare there for you. But I've definitely taken solace in my um my crochet and my knitting, and um, I will do a video for you. Um, about my works in progress and upcoming projects and things like that because that that'll be fun that'll be a bit you know lighten me up so anyway yeah I <laughs> I hope you have enjoyed the video and enjoyed having a look and maybe it gave it gave you some um, project ideas of patterns you can complete um, coming up and things like that I mean I can't tell you how amazing it was to test all those patterns this year um and it just really was what i needed at the time because it gave me some sort of deadlines um and really has helped me sort of hold myself accountable because otherwise i was just letting myself you know slide into a pit of despair <laughs> um but uh yeah, so I, I do recommend, you know, if you're confident enough, um, crochet or knitter, then doing some tests, if you think you can achieve it in the time frame, I mean, they're very upfront about how long you have to turn things around, um, then I highly recommend it, I think it's well worth it. Um, and it's fun and there's really nice groups of people that you can bounce ideas off of and the pattern you know the um, designers are usually like wow well, I've never had any designers that aren't lovely 100% lovely um so yes anyway I will love you and leave you and I hope everyone else is well and staying safe and yeah having amazing crafting goodness and I will see you all soon. Bye.